At Hubbub, we've started reflecting on the year that was, which has seen a huge shift in the conversation around environmental trends. We thought that we'd take a little bit of time to look back over the events that have shaped conversation this year and take a look forward into what 2019 might hold. I am here today with Truen, who is the CEO of Hubbub. We are going to be speaking about some of the environmental trends over the past year and looking forward into the future. What were the big environmental trends of 2018 and did the conversation shift a lot this year? Well, it's been a momentous year, hasn't it? I mean, who thought you'd go into a pub and people would be talking about plastics? Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. You get a national treasure like David Attenborough doing Blue Planet and people seeing like stark images of animals with plastics sort mm. of various parts of their bodies. So that's, that's been huge. And what's interesting is that David Attenborough started the conversation, governments jumped in, companies have jumped in and people have jumped in. So all of a sudden you've got like these different people all talking about the same thing. And then the other thing that's happened this year is that the world scientists have given us the starkest warning ever. Yeah that climate change is happening really fast mm -hmm. and then we've got 12 years to sort it out. And then people are starting to see weird weather patterns. You know, we've had wildfires, mm -hmm. we've had droughts, we've had heat waves, you know, and people are starting to realise that the weather patterns are changing. Is this the biggest shift that you've seen kind of across your career in terms of people talking <laughs> about climate change? This is the first time I've seen the conversations kept going but also businesses are changing and governments getting involved as well. And also people are starting to see the impacts of our lives on the world. And when that starts to happen as well, you know, it's not just a scientist saying, oh, things aren't going well. To home. You know, when you see homes flooded or you see fires, you know, you think, ah, actually, this is my life. I think the, I don't think we can talk about trends without talking about Blue Planet yeah. and plastics. What do you think is going to happen as the conversation moves on next year? So I think it's, it's hit home because it's David Attenborough, it's animals and you can see it and mm -hmm. it's part of your daily lives. I think we'll see some government sort of legislation come in. So, you know, we're going to start perhaps seeing trials of uh, reverse vending machines and mm. deposit machines. Uh, and that's where you can put your bottle in and then you get money back out for your like empty plastic. I think we'll see the plastic bag charge go up to 10p mm. and be extended to more shops. Mm -hmm. We're going to start to talk more about sort of the hidden plastics. Okay. Um, so obviously everybody's talking about cups and straws and bottles, but actually it's the tiny bits of plastic, sort of the micro plastics, mm. which come from our clothes, they come from car tyres. That's the, that's the stuff that fish are eating, it's getting in the food system. Mm -hmm. And I think there's going to be a growing awareness that actually we're pumping more and more of this stuff into the oceans, it's then coming back into our food chain. What's the health implications of that? There is loads of action that people are already taking on plastic. So loads of pubs aren't serving plastic straws anymore and more and more people are using reusable cups. Yeah. But is there anything else that we can do to take more action on this issue? Yeah, so there's, there's a really boring thing called the waste hierarchy, <laughs> okay. which, but it's actually quite important. Reduce, reuse, recycle. You know, cut it out where mm -hmm. you can. So, you know, avoid it. Uh, think about reusable, so obviously bottles, um, cups. Uh, and then, rather boringly, go and find out what you actually can recycle in your locality and, and recycle it. But it's the reduction and the reuse, those are the two things that you should always have in mind. Save you money as well. Winner. So I saw the other day that searches for sustainable fashion has been the highest that it's ever been on Google. Yeah. And then loads of other really cool stuff has happened, like Christopher Rayburn was hired as the global creative director of Timberland and he's a sustainable fashion designer. Yeah. So fashion is one of Hubbub's hubs. Uh, we're trying to change the fashion industry for like four years and it's like brick wall. Because basically the fashion industry makes money through fast fashion. Mm -hmm. So all you see is the, fast, the industry gets faster and faster and faster, clothes get cheaper, people buy them, buy them once, chuck them away. This will be a trend that grows. Mm -hmm. So, and what's going to be interesting, how do the industry respond? So they're going to have to look at different types of fabrics, but also they've got to sort of start thinking about another model. Yeah. So, might we start sort of renting clothes more or, you know, getting clothes that last longer uh, or re repurposing, refashioning, all of those sort of things. But I think the industry can't carry on on the path that it's going now because mm -hmm. uh, it's just destructive. And what can I do if I want to change the way that I'm consuming fashion? What can I do? So it's, it's buy clothes that you love, mm -hmm. look after them, keep them, cherish them, repurpose them you know, and think about how you can put together wardrobes that you can mix and match so you get more from your clothes. 
Another trend that I have noticed this year is meat mm. and meat consumption. Mm. So I read a Guardian article that said that a third of people in the UK are trying to cut down the amount of meat that they eat or getting rid of it entirely. Um, do you think it's been like a big shift this year? Yeah, and a growing one. And sort of 20 years ago, nobody was even thinking about, you know, your burger and climate change are connected. Mm -hmm. um, and, and as we've gone on over the years, that's become more and more obvious to the point that this year when the scientists got together and said, we need to do something, we need to change across all parts of society. The thing that people can do individually that have the biggest impact is eat less meat. So like the scientists have like really pinpointed mm -hmm. that. But then you've got other stuff going on, which is like health, mm. um, cost, and then concerns about animal welfare. So you've got all these things sort of coming together. And what we're seeing is that people are now changing what they're buying and changing what they're eating. When supermarkets are starting to, and you can see it, you know, starting to prominently put vegetarian and vegan food nearer sort of like the start of the shop. Or to having a line in the first place. Exactly, which... yeah. And that's their fastest growing range. And But now you've got Messi is like a vegan and like iconic sports figures. Your idols. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, wow, if they can be that fit and that good and they're, they're like vegetarian or vegan, mm -hmm. that's astonishing. Getting the family to shift is really difficult. Mm -hmm. So what we've did is we started to phase out beef and then lamb and then I always like try and have a vegetarian or vegan day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't have to be totally purist about it. You can do it gradually and you can get into new habits and routines and they're more likely to stick. And the important thing to say is that that's still making a huge environmental impact, even if you're only having meat one less day of the week. Yeah. That's still yeah. massive. Yeah, and don't underestimate that. So those are all of the trends, or the big trends that we've been looking at this year. But looking into your crystal ball, yeah. what do you think are going to be the big conversations that are happening next year? So there's one story that's been building and building and building this year. And next year, I think, will start it comes forward, which is air quality. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're seeing more and more stats about poor air quality in our cities, mm -hmm. what it's doing to our health. And it's getting really alarming and the people it's hitting most are the vulnerable, so it's children and the elderly. I mean, there'll be legislative stuff, yeah. you know, the government are being forced, kicking and screaming to do more about this. Uh, there are more and more mayors of cities who are like, right, we're going to do something mm -hmm. about this. But I think we're going to see a much more sort of citizen-based approach, you know, saying this is an outrage that, you know, we can't trust the air we breathe. And there's loads of stuff you can do. How we change our travel choices, uh, how you change like your route to, to work mm. or school, even even sort of walking slightly further away from a busy road because bad air quality is so localised. So there's lots of things you can do. So there's a way that we can change our lives to reduce our exposure, but ultimately we've got to stop polluting so much. Uh, which, does that mean driving less? It, it does, it means you're, like, you're less diesel, more electrification, stuff we're seeing, but just think about you know, how you buy stuff. So, you know, you go on, you get an Amazon delivery, maybe get delivered to work. And all you're doing is putting loads of vehicles on the road. You've got 10 couriers all coming to the exactly, same place. Exactly, to get it to you because you want it tomorrow. So, you know, are there things you can do with like your work colleagues? Like let's let's batch our orders perhaps, or, or think about how we can get our workplace to sort of try and reduce the amount of traffic we have on our roads by just changing the way we order stuff. Mm -hmm. We have a lot more information and people seem a little bit more ready to take action. Yeah, so, and it's really interesting how they're doing that, isn't there? So you've got the groups are like trying to cause disruption everywhere, yeah. <laughs> you know, by blocking it off streets mm -hmm. and like just causing, yeah, just general disruption saying, come on, you've got to do something. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's that happening more. But we're seeing a lot more uh, local activism. We've seen that like with our community fridge network, you know, that's people doing what they can in their locality. And then I think we're going to sort of start seeing people voting with their money a lot more. So, you know, you're already seeing on social media that people are calling out companies, you know, if they see ridiculous packaging mm -hmm. or, you know, other things that they just think are bad for the environment. Because we have a power, right, with yeah, as consumers and I think we, we don't quite know how much power we have. It's really interesting, you know, we work with a lot of companies they're uber sensitive to what the customers are doing and telling them. So I think it was Marks and Spencers 
did the overwrapped cauliflower steak. <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> it went off shelf incredibly quickly, you know, because of consumer action. And if you've got consumers doing that, and then you've got government going, oh, we're going to start like taxing or making things more expensive if you do the wrong thing, then that becomes all quite powerful. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing people should do to, if they see something like that, call a company out, you know, make their voice heard is a really easy thing to do. Yeah, I think we've got to avoid clicktivism. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, can't, you can't feel like your conscience is appeased because you've <laughs> sent a narky tweet to somebody. Um, if, if you actually change what you do, mm -hmm. then that has more of an impact. Are you optimistic looking at the year ahead? So there's a head and a heart, isn't there? Mm -hmm. So the head says you look at all the statistics and, you know, we cannot run away from the fact carbon emissions are going up, scientists are telling us we've got to act quickly, there's more plastic. <laughs> but, you know, we need to know that. And then there's the heart bit. And the heart bit says, you know, that people are amazingly creative, innovative. They, in times of crisis, come together and do astonishing things. There is community activity. Businesses are actually taking this fairly seriously. Government's fine, he seems to be waking up. Um, you know, there's more conversation than ever. So we have to build on all of those little bits of, of, of potential and turn it into a mass movement at scale and speed. If businesses and innovators can see that the world's changing, they will react really quickly. But it's, it's got to be driven by that citizen movement. Use our voice and come together and make a difference. Everything's interlinked. Politicians will change if they think they'll get votes. Companies will get, make change if they think it, the market's sort of moving. Everyday decisions are a crucial part of that web. When you look at what's happening scientifically, anything you can do, anything, even if it feels incredibly trivial, is, is really important. So, you know, the things you definitely can do, diet, crucial, travel choices, plastics, packaging, recycling more. Stop littering, you know, all these really, you know, from the quite mundane to the quite significant, all of those things are part of that web that, that builds momentum of bigger change. Whatever happens next year, 2018 has seen some huge leaps forward. I would love to know which of the topics that we talked about today resonated with you most. If you want to take action on anything that we talked about today, I will be filling the description with links of ways that you can get involved. And it's always important to remember that as a person, a citizen and a consumer, you have a huge power to create change with the way you live your life, with what you buy and how you use your voice. Please let me know what you think governments and businesses should be focusing on next year in the comments and the changes that you want to make in your life. Thank you so much for watching and have a very happy new year. And that's the end of the episode. To find out more and to get inspired, head to our website, www.hubbub.org.uk, where you'll find loads of top tips to give you the spark to do things differently. Tune in for the next episode and come and join the Hubbub. <laughs>